First of all, I just want to thank God for being here today and having another opportunity to break bread with you. This is part two on our series, Walk by Faith, Using the Life of Abraham, Walk by Faith. Now, for those that were here when we did part one, which was two weeks ago, because last week we had a guest speaker, but, but two weeks ago we did part one on Walk by Faith, and we talked about what it is, what faith is, and, 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 and we got an understanding not only what faith is in Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, but we understand that true faith is trusting God, not only trusting in God, but trusting God, having confidence in God, and, and resting purely in Him and in His Word. And, and, and when you trust God like that, it will cause you, we found out that it will cause you to be obedient to God. When He says, go, you'll go. When He says, do, you'll do. When He says, stay, you'll stay. You know, and, 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 and we kind of talked about, you know, how faith come, you know. And we're going to talk about that more because faith come by hearing and hearing about the word of God. And that we walk by faith and not by sight, not by what we see or what we can see. As we were talking this morning, you know, sometimes we can't see the future, but we know who holds the future. And, and, and we have a goal. Some of us have goals. We have plans. And there's nothing wrong with having goals and having plans in, in our lives, but, but put our goals and our plans in the hand of God. Put them in the hand of God. Because as the book of James tells us, we don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. And so we say, if God will, I'll go here or go there. Or I'll do this or do that, if that's God's will. But when we pray in faith and we know what God's word has said, we don't have to say if it be God's will. We say what is according to God's will. We speak his word according to his will. So that's what we do. But we're talking, once again, about walking by faith, using the life of Abraham. And we found out that Abraham, in Hebrews chapter 11, that Abraham believed God. And I think it's around verse 8, and it says, and he did what? He obeyed God. And that's so important that we believe God and we do what? Everybody say this with me. Obey God. God. Obey God. Because sometimes there are people that say they believe, but yet they still haven't obeyed. They say they believe, but they still haven't obeyed. And so if you truly believe, have faith in God. Believe him. Trust him. Today, we're going to be talking about in this series, in part two of this series, Walk by Faith, that God didn't bring you there to leave you there. Mm -hmm. This is something we need to understand. There are places that God has taken you in the past, and he didn't take you to that place to leave you that place. And there are places God have you, both physically and above all, spiritually, right now, that God don't plan for you to stay there. You know, uh, some of you may even think, well, you know, God doesn't have me here at this church to keep me at this church. And you know what? That's true. I'm telling some of you that right now. God doesn't have you here to keep you here. There are some of you God want to use you and, and grow you in his word to move you out eventually. That's what he did with me and, and many men and women around this world. Most pastors grew up in a church, went to a church, was fed by that pastor in that church, and then God called them to a ministry. They continued to grow under that ministry, or God moved them out to another ministry to continue to grow, and then God moved them out to minister. I don't know what your future holds, but I know while you're here, God wants me to feed you his word and prepare you for whatever he has for you. And for those that are going to be here and going to, you may, this may be your here, but it's not for you to stay here. What do I mean by stay here? Stay right where you are in the system of your spiritual growth. And we're going to be talking about that. God doesn't have you here to keep you here. Right where you are right now is not, not talking about your physical location, not the seat that you got your butt in. And God say butt in church. I already did, so forgive me. But not, not where you have your bottom sitting in the sense of physicality, but in spirituality. God doesn't have you here to keep you here. He wants you to grow on, 
He wants you to do what? Grow on. And sometimes we'll say go on, but I'm going to use this word grow on. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11. And once again, we're using the life of Abraham. We're using the life of Abraham in this series of Walk by Faith. Amen? Now in Genesis chapter 11, we are introduced to Abraham. Now I read this, you know, a couple of weeks ago in our introduction, but I'm going to read part of it again because from here, from here we're going to see how God wanted Abraham to go on, to go on to where a place where he was sending him. Now, if you're if you're if you're following along with me, open up your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11 and let's look at verse 27. Now we're going to give you a little, uh, 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 in reading this, you're going to see a little bit about Abraham's past and, and where he was. It says, now, these are the generations of Terah. Now, Terah was Abraham's father. <coughs> so if y'all don't know that, this was Abraham's father. And this is the generations of Terah. And it says, and Terah begot Abram, which is Abraham before God changed his name. So Abram, he begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot, Lot. And Haran died before his, his father, Terah, in the land of his nativity, in the in Ur of the Chaldeans. Now, and now this young man, this man, he died before his father did. And he died in the land where he was born and in the land where he was raised. And it says, verse 29, and Abram and Nora took wives. The names of Abram's wife was Sarai and the name of Nahor's wife was Melchah, the daughter of Haran and the father of Milcah and the father of Iscah. But Sarai was barren, and this is an important point, verse 30. Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot his son, <coughs> the, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with, with them from Ur of the Chaldeans, into the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now, point. Now this is where I want to get to. They were heading to Canaan. They were heading to Canaan. This is where God was taking Abraham's father. But Terah stopped in Haran. And he died there. Now he hadn't died when God called Abraham to go away. He lived 205 years and he hadn't, he, so he hadn't died then, but it says, but in the land, he never got to God's destination for him. And there are so many people in our lives who never get to the place that God has in store for you. And this was the point that God kept iterating to me this past week as I was studying and, and thinking about this message. God has a destination for each and every one of us to get to. And they were heading toward that destination. And maybe in your life, maybe your dad or your mom was heading to the place that God wanted them to be, but they stopped short of it. Sometimes in getting our education, we're heading toward, and I'm so glad you're, uh, 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 you're getting your education, you're continuing on your education. Because as you, as you increase your education and better your education, you also prepare to better your life. Because right where you are right now is not where you're going to be. Mm. But if you stop, but if you stop, 
See, Tira stopped. And he ended up dying, being short of the destination where God was taking him. And, and I don't know about you. See, in, in my family, there were people who stopped and got no farther than where they were because they went no farther to where God was showing them. See, God was taking them. Terah had his, his, his sons and his daughter-in-laws and his nephew and all that he had gained. And, and God was taking them where? To Canaan, to, Canaan. to the promised land, to glory. And there are people that, that we're talking spiritually now as well, was heading in the right direction. Think about it. Think about people you know. Think about family members. We're growing in the Lord. God, mother, dad, mom, and dad was taking them to church, hearing the word. But somewhere in that person's life, they stopped. They stopped going to church. They stopped listening to the word. They stopped growing. They stopped praying. They stopped praising. And now they're stuck right where they are in this world. Hopefully, they still got a chance because they always have a chance to repent and go on to where God wants them. But how many people do you know died short of their destiny? Died short of their destiny. Tira died. God didn't bring you here to leave you here. He didn't bring you right where you are. You know, I know, I know a, a young woman Things, some circumstances went on in her life that were traumatic. And she could have let that kill her. She could have stopped right there from, from, from where God had her going to. But she did. And God has brought her father and father both naturally and spiritually. Both naturally and spiritually. Because she didn't stop. In the land where she was. She didn't stop. But she kept going. Going on in the Lord. Well the same thing with our spiritual growth. Same thing as with our spiritual growth. God doesn't have you right where you are. To leave you here. You know the Bible says. That after you've been born again. You haven't been, a, been born of corruptible seed, but been born of in. First Peter chapter 1, the latter part of it. Not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. But after that, you've been born again. You know what the Bible tells us to do in chapter 2? It says, lay aside all malice and all guile and all superfluity of naughtiness. And then you take the engrafted word of God. And then he says in verse 2, Desire the sincere milk of the word so you can do what? Grow. But not just so you can grow. So you can grow on to be what God wants you to be. If so be that you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. God doesn't want you to stay right where you are. You know, I love it in, in my conversation uh, before the message that I was talking to Sister Doris and she was telling me what she was studying and then also what she's studying naturally and what she's studying out of the Bible and she's putting it and it's causing her to grow. It's causing her to grow. And then to have wisdom. See, wisdom is the correct application of knowledge because we can gain knowledge and never grow because knowledge is the information. Am I correct? Am I correct? So you can gain a lot of information. A lot of information. But the Bible says with all of your getting, in the book of Proverbs it says with all of your getting, get an understanding. And when you get an understanding, then you apply wisdom to what the knowledge that you have. And that's how you grow. Mm. And not only you grow, but you help others to grow. Look with me. We're still here in Genesis. Look with me in chapter 12. 
Verse 1, because now, because where you are right now, God is telling you now, get up and grow on and go on. Go. He says here, verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. It says, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And sometimes you got to get away from some people. No, no, Pastor, I just, my cousin is my best friend. I can't. But your cousin is lying, cheating, stealing, trying to get you to lie, cheat, steal, committing fornication, adultery, and all other kind of things, and trying to get you to do them with him, and you're going to keep hanging there? Mm. He said, get up. Get up. I like what David said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Where? Into the house of the Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. See, get up and go where God's going to show you. Get up and go where God's going to meet you. Get up and go where God is taking you so you can do and be and have the things that God said you can do, be and have. He told Abram to get up. Get away from your kinfolk. Get away from those folk that are holding you back. Now that don't mean it's you, that you got cousins and uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters that's holding you back. That may not be you. But there's somebody's situation. Or friends. I talk to a lot of teenagers and most of their, their biggest problems are their friends. Or their so-called friends. Their biggest problems are their friends. Who they hang around with. Don't you know in the book of, of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, look, evil communication corrupts good manners. Who you hanging with? Because who you're hanging with can corrupt the goodness that's already in you. See, I used to ask my oldest son back when he was 12, 13 years old, and, and he used to like to hang around these certain guys, and then I said, well, son, it's all right. You know, first, he's an athlete. He's a football player. He played a little baseball. He played basketball. He ran track. He's an athlete. But I said, son, why are you hanging around those guys that, you know, want to be little junior gangbangers? He says, well, dad, these are my friends. You know, being, being a part of the gang, you know, it's like being in a family. I said, son, you got a family. And then you don't need a gang because you, you, you play sports. You got a gang. You got teammates. You got teammates. So what do you need that for? Now, if you are hanging around them, then that's fine that you do in a, in a certain extent because Jesus said, you know, he came to seek and to save those that are lost. He came to influence and not be influenced. And I asked my son, who's influencing who? Are they influencing you to do the things they're doing? Or are you influencing them to get closer to God? I said, because son, if you're not doing that, or if you're not at least influencing them not to do some of the, 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 the corrupt things, the unlawful things, and the evil things that they're thinking about doing, then you're in the wrong place. See, if their dirt is falling off on you instead of your goodness falling off on them, you're in the wrong place, son. I said, so why do you need a game? You got a family. You said, hey, hey, it's like a family. Well, you got a family. You got a mom, a dad, and two sisters and two brothers. So what do you need a family for outside of this house? You got cousins. You got aunts and uncles. Well, well, it's like, you know, being, you know, in the club. I said, you're an athlete. You got teammates. That's the only club you need to be in. Be perfecting your skills physically so you can be a, a, an asset to the team and not a liability. And that's what God wants us to be on his team. He wants us to be an asset, not a liability. He wants us to be able, as we receive, he said, freely you receive, freely do what? Freely you receive, freely do what? Give. Freely you receive, freely you do what? Give. You give and you give of yourself. You give of yourself to one another. If a brother or sister are hurting or, or something, you give of yourself and you try to be there for them. You try to encourage them. You try to help them. If you have this world's goods and one of them have a need and, and, and you have the thing that they need, then if you can part with it, part with it and give it to them. That's what the Bible says.
wants us to grow on. Because as we grow, then we become more and more and more like God's dear son, like Jesus. And he told Abraham, and see, we're learning this through the life of Abraham because Abraham had to do what? Get up and go. He had to get up and go. He didn't bring him to, to Haran to leave him there. He didn't bring him to, to the land of Ur and the Chaldeans to leave him there. Because when his dad was heading in the right direction to the right place, but after his son Haran died, he stayed and dwelled in a land called Haran. Maybe he stayed there because the, the land was named after his son or the land had the same name as his son. We don't know, but he stayed there. He got com complacent. And he didn't get up and go where God was taking him. As you see, you go back to verse 11, and it says where, 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 where God was taking him, where? To the land of Canaan. They were heading, the, verse, uh, uh, verse 31, the latter part, and it says, they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. They were going to go into the land of Canaan. But he never got there because he stopped short of his destination. Don't stop short of your destination. Wherever God is taking you, continue that journey. Continue that journey. Don't stop short of your destination. See, our ultimate goal as Christians is to be more and more like who? Christ. To be like Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. But so many Christians stop so short of that. Well, I'm saved, I'm born again, okay, I, I, well, that's all I need to do, so I don't, I, don't, I don't need to come to church to keep growing. And so they don't come to church. So they don't grow anymore. Well, I could, I could study on my own, and you can, but do you? Everybody, and, and, and y'all answer this for me to yourself, is, but everybody that I've met that said, I don't need to go to church to, to, to get into the Word. I study on my own. I say, okay, what have you learned? Their mouth gets shut. Well, 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 don't, if you study the Word, don't you know the Word says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together, how? In unity. If you study the word, don't you know the word says that, that don't forsake the assembly of yourselves as the man of others do, but we ought to do it the more so as we see the day of... If you study the word, don't you know David had penned this, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you study the word, but they wasn't studying it because if they were studying, they would know that. And then that... And if they know that, and the Bible tells us to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only doing what? Deceiving, fooling, and tricking your own stupid self. Not you, but people you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I can study on my own. You're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. So God wants us to grow on. To grow on. Go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Say amen when you get there. Oh, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6, and I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us, let us do what? For y'all that are there, go on. Let us do what? Go, go on. on. Let us do what? Go, go on. on. <clears throat> See, now when it says leaving, that doesn't mean that we leave this behind. <coughs> I explained this before that we go from that and we go forward and learn more. Once again, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, not the doctrine of your denomination, not the doctrine of your religion, not the doctrine of, 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 of your club or, 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 or fraternity, but the doctrine of Christ, what is Jesus Christ's doctrine? 
He says, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and the laying on of hands and the resurrection from the dead and of eternal judgment. As this, and this we will do if God permits. In other words, as God permits and God has permitted for us to do what? Go on. To go on. To grow on. Go, go flip your page backwards one to chapter five. Because there are people you know that say, well, I've been in the way for 30 years. Yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> and get in the way of God. There are a lot of people been saved for a long time, but you haven't seen no growth in them. There are a lot of people been in church for a long time, but they're still as babes needing. Paul even said, "I feed you as babes because uh, with milk because you can't handle strong meat." You know the apostle Paul had to tell some folks that. Mm. He said, "Cause you can't handle what I'm teaching right now, so I got to I got to spoon feed you like a baby because if I give you something stronger, it, it'll it, it'll rock your world." You'll get all flabbergasted, like, oh, oh, you just like when Jesus, in, 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 in the book of St. John, don't turn there, but it's there, chapter 6, you write this down and, and go there later, read it tonight. Jesus was talking about, about, you know, eating his flesh and drinking his blood, and, and he was talking about, you know, how, how that's going to cleanse people and save them, and, and, and unless they do that, then, then they're none of God's, and they're none of his, and, this, and I'm paraphrasing this, but what I'm saying, there were people like, oh, Woo! This is a hard saying. Who can handle it? He was trying to give them some meat. He said, who can handle it? This is a hard saying. And then the Bible says that they were offended. And they left. We have some people that left this church because they were offended. Because I was preaching holiness, sanctification, righteousness. We ain't preaching. I want to be saved. I don't mind coming to church occasionally and even putting a nickel or two in the basket, but preacher, you're talking about me changing my life. You're talking about being holy. Look, I still like fornicating. I still like going to the bar and drinking and, and cutting up and, and lying. And, and I still like, I still like, you know, uh, uh, stealing a little bit, you know, and doing this, that. Hey, Jesus said they don't come to the light because their deeds are evil. They, they prefer darkness than light. But he didn't bring you into salvation for you to just stop right there. Well, I'm saved. I, I, I'm good to go now. But he wants you to grow. He wants you to grow. And he says here, are you in, are, are you in, in Hebrews chapter 5? Look with me at verse 12. For when for the time you ought to be teachers... You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the ordinance of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Because mm. I now now I don't know about you, but I know some people like that. I know some people that have been so-called saved. As long as I have, and they're still in the same place where they started. They're still babes. And, 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 and this is a time in their life when they ought to be teaching somebody else, helping somebody else to grow. They still need to be taught again the first principles of God. God didn't bring you here to leave you here. He didn't start you in this life of salvation for you to stay right there. He wants you to grow. For what purpose? That you'll help others grow. That you'll bring others in. That you'll, be, you'll become a part of the body and a part of the outreach of God's outstretched hand to others. Because God is not going to do this by himself. Actually, I, 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 dis, I, I dislike, I almost said hate. I'm going to say hate. I hate it when I hear preachers say, God don't need you. Mm. That's a lie. God does need you because the Bible says it's by the foolishness of preaching whereby man can be saved. 
saved. God didn't send the angels to preach the gospel. If so, Cornelius would have never sent for Simon Peter. The angel that told him to send for Peter would have preached to him right there. He said, send for a man. Send for a man. Because salvation came through a man. The man Jesus Christ. And that's how God established it. In Romans chapter 10 it says, how can they, how can they believe on him they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? Without somebody to tell it. And for you to be able to tell it, now you can tell it from right where you are. But you can tell more the more you grow. You can reveal more of the nature of God and the spirit of God and the character of God as you grow. Whoo, man. He said, look, these, some of those people out there, some of you, you ought to be a lot farther along than you are. I didn't bring you here. Go to the destination. Go both spiritually and naturally. Go to where I sent you. You still in chapter 5 mm -hmm. of Hebrews? Look with me at verse 13. For everyone that used milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But strong meat belong to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, by reason of what? Use. Use. Have their, their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. See, you got to use the word. Be a doer of the word. But you got to grow in the word. You got to grow in the word. Last verse of scripture and we're going to close. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. I've been here before but I want to go here again to push this point of what God, God because God, this, we're not going to close from here. We're going to go back actually to Genesis uh, chapter 12 before we, before we close but this is going to bring us it's going to bring us to the pinnacle of the mountain. So that you can see what God wants you to do. God wants to use you. He wants to use you to, to get other men, women, boys, and girls saved, delivered, set free, and to help them to grow in the things of God. Just as he uses me. He said, well, Pastor, I don't think I'm ever going to be a preacher like you. You don't know what you're going to be. I didn't know until God called me. But until he called me, I kept growing from a babe until I got to where he said, now we are. I'm calling you to preach. And even after he called me, I continued to sit faithfully under the pastors and teachers that I had so I could keep growing. So I could keep growing and keep growing. And then after being faithful to uh, Pastor Wilson Hall there at, at, at True Life Christian Fellowship, God told me, Bill, get up and go to a place I'm going to show you. That's what brought me to my Lord's house of prayer. I was faithful at our church, and I was content being there. God was using Benita and I there. We were being used of God. We were serving that fellowship faithfully and doing outreach and doing anything and doing what the pastor asked us to do. But God said, get up and go. And some of you, he said, Pastor, there's not that many of us right now. If God sent me, you know, who you going to have left here? God will send somebody else here. I'm not worried about who's not here right now. Sometimes I do for our members that are members here, and I don't see them. I, I, my heart hurts for some of them, and then my heart wants to know, okay, what's going on with you? Like, after we leave church today, Sister Harrison and I, we, we're going to go over and see Sister Michelle because she got, she got hurt. She's injured. So she has a reason because that is one of the most faithful sisters we have in this church. 
And if she wasn't sick or healed or injured, she'd be sitting right there. Matter of fact, right over there. <laughs> or, or back there. She'd be here. And be ready to be used. Be, she's always ready to be used and be ready to minister. She just didn't come here to get all she can and can all she got, sit on the top and let the rest rock. She come here that all she get, she can use and dispute and di distribute. See, that's spiritual as well as natural. If you get natural things and you have an abundance of natural things, God, he didn't give you all of that for you to hoard it. He gave you for some of, some of us to use and, and to distribute. But with the spiritual things, as he told his disciples, Jesus said, as you freely receive, freely give. As you receive the word, as you receive the blessing, give. And you're going to see that in here with Abraham because Oh, man, y'all making me jump over there. I'm just going to go and put it over in, 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 don't turn there, but in, in, in Genesis chapter 12, you'll see God told Abraham, when you go and do what I told you to do, he says, I'm going I'm I'm to cause you to be a blessing. I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to bless them that bless you, and I'm going to curse them that curse you. He said, but I'm doing this to cause you to be the blessing because in you, all nations, all families shall be blessed. God's not blessing you for you to keep it for yourself. He's blessing you to be a blessing. Yeah. And I said that two weeks ago, but I'm going to reiterate that point. He's blessing you to be a blessing. That's what he wants you to be. But you got to continue to grow on from where you are. You look at right where you are, you, you, you identify your location. You know, I told y'all again, I was in the military for 21 years, and you know, we did land navigation, we did map meeting. Because, and then, when you're out on deployment, sometimes when you're calling in, I had to call in one time for, for, for air support. You know, I had to call for air support, so when you call for air support, you gotta let them know your location. And if you don't know where you are, if they're dropping, they're, whether they're, they're giving you air support, to, to, to defeat an enemy that got you trapped or they're giving you air support to resupply you. You can call in for air support for many things. Or they, you got a wounded person, you need to get them out, you get, need to get them uh, 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 helicoptered out. You call air support for a lot of things. Well, I had to call in air support. This particular time, it was for resupply. Resupply of food, goods, and ammunition. Because if air support didn't know where we were and they dropped it in the enemy's camp, the enemy will have our food, our supply, and our ammunition. And we're sitting there like dead ducks. Or you're sitting there hungry, starving. Getting weaker every day because you don't have the nourishment for your body. So you got to know where you are. So right now, locate where you are. You say, Lord, where am I in you? Am I where you want me to be? Lord, I, I still say today, I'm not where God wants me to be. I'm not talking about my physical location. This is where he wants me to be right now. Here in my Lord's house of prayer. Here in the San Antonio area. Physically. But spiritually, where am I? I like how the, the old saints used to say back in, 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 the, in the church. Well, I'm not... What, a, uh, what I'm supposed to be yet, but I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Yeah. But I'm going on to be what he want me to be. Let me say that again. I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet, but I'm glad I'm not where I used to be. But I'm going on to be what he want me to be. I'm going on to be where he want me to be. Got to go on. Abraham had to get up and go to a place that God was going to show him. And it wasn't just for Abraham. It was for those. He was, see, there are people you're supposed to effect. Effect and affect. There are people you to bring to God. And there are some that's already in the Lord, but they've stopped. You've got to help them to keep growing. Some of them need you. They need your, they need your wisdom. They need your experience. They need your testimony. They need your love. They need your patience with them because nobody else won't be patient with them. But they need you. But for you to be that, you gotta go on. You gotta go on. You're in Philippians, the Ephesians, Ephesians chapter four. 
Look with me at verse 11. It says, and God gave, watch this, watch this. Because y'all you, you need to do them. Understand the purpose of your pastor. Why your pastor is not so, so always, you know, sweet. <laughs> and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastor teachers. Pastors and teachers. I'm a pastor teacher with an evangelistic spirit. So I got three of these gifts. For the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of who? The saints. The saints. For the perfecting of the pastor. Y'all supposed to say, no, 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 the saints. Echo that again. For the perfecting of who? The saints. For the perfecting of the pastor. My four and no more. Just my family. No. For the perfecting of the saints. God gave you a pastor to help you to get where he want you to be. He says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. You got a work in you. Yes. You got a work in you. And you got to grow to do that work. For the edifying, for the building up of the body of Christ. Till we all come, how? In the unity of the faith. Are, they, are we unified in the faith? No. Look at the church world today. The church world is so divided and fragmented. It's a shame. Yes. It's a shame. Because... Different people have their own agendas and not God's agenda. My agenda is to help you grow on unto perfection. To grow on, to be more and more like Jesus. To see you holy, sanctified, set apart, meet for the master's use unto every good work, the Bible says. In other words, to be useful to God for the perfecting of the saints. Not just for the pastor, because as you see this, as you see this, for the perfecting of the saints, for, for what reason? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. The ministry is just not in the pastor. The ministry is in everybody in the ministry. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge. We, turned, we said earlier, knowledge is information. And the, the knowledge of who? The Son of God. Unto a perfect man. We ought to be more and more. Well, God didn't say we, I hate it when I hear preachers on YouTube and over the air say, well, well, God don't want you to be perfect. Mm. Yes, he does. But he knows you're not going to get there. But he looks at your pursuit. Some people stopped. Because preachers are saying, well, you, you don't have to be perfect. God doesn't want you to be perfect. If Jesus was the only perfect man and he wants us to be like Jesus, what is he saying he wants us to be? Perfect. But we will never get there on our own. But the more we work toward it, the more we're going toward Canaan, the more we go, see, we're supposed to go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. My faith tells me, I, I, I'm going to say it, look, say it like this. I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on to go where God wants me to be. And that's to be more like Jesus. That's to get to the promise. Unto the Son of God, unto the perfect man, unto the measure. Look what he wants him to be like. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Did he say, did he say anywhere he wants you to stop and stay where you are? No. Hold your finger right here. We're going to come back. Just, just go, to, go to Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. This is not even in my notes. Just the Holy Spirit just dropped this in my spirit to show you this. 2 Peter chapter 1. And watch what, how Peter addresses us and then what he tells us to do. Y'all y'all going to fall over backwards when y'all say, is this really what the Lord want me to do? Yes. And watch what he says, to grow on, to grow on. He says, but there, verse 1, I'm going to start there. But there were false prophets also among the people. We got that now. A whole lot of them. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who, who privately shall 
bring into uh, damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that, that bought them, and bringing unto themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their, their, their uh, pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And y'all seeing that today. Look at how they're trying to down the Bible, not to down Jesus. And everything that is true, they're trying to dismiss. The council culture, they're going to cancel you. They're going to cancel the Bible. They're going to cancel righteousness. Well, you don't have to be holy anymore. You don't have to repent anymore. Just, just do good and treat everybody nice. Mm. <laughs> but he says, verse 3, and through, and through covetousness shall they with faith. Are we in 2 Peter yet? 2 Peter chapter actually, 2. Verse actually, I'm reading in chapter 2. Yes. Man, for yes. some reason, yes. I went to chapter 2. Go to chapter 3. Go to chapter 1. Okay. <laughs> that, that's where I was supposed to be. But you know what? This is good. This follows up chapter 1, but watch this. Simon Peter, a servant of the and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that, that have obtained like precious faith, that's you and me, with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be what? Multiply. See, God's a mathematician. He wants to multiply grace and peace unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto, unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness, through how the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might know or ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust and besides this giving all diligence giving all what? Diligence, diligence add to your faith Virtue. Now the title of this, 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 this series is Walk by Faith. So we got to add to our faith, what? Virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. And, and, and for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God doesn't want you to be barren. Sarai was what? Barren. She was barren. But she was barren with the seed of a child. God doesn't want us to be barren or unfruitful in his word. He wants his word to abide in you. So that you can then plant his word into others. And that his word will germinate and cause others to be saved and to what? Grow. Amen. But in the knowledge, don't, don't be unfruitful in the knowledge. Ignorance killed. The Bible says, my people perish. You know what I'm saying? He said, my people perish. For what reason? A lack of knowledge. In, in, in Romans chapter 1, it says that when they didn't want to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things where were not convenient because they didn't want to retain God's knowledge. But they wanted to be wise in their own deceit. But he that lacked these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, saints of God, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, you shall never what? Y'all not following him up? You should never fall. You should never fall. 
You should never fall. If you do, if you continue to add, if you continue to grow on, if you continue to, to, to go on from where you are, if you do these things, if you continue to add to the knowledge of God, the virtue, and all these things he said to add, and understand, and get an understanding, as we were talking about in Proverbs before the lesson, and get an understanding, it will make you neither barren nor unfruitful. But what God, the Bible says, he that begun a good work in you, he is faithful. Completed. He's faithful. But will you continue to walk with him? Or will you be like those disciples in John chapter 6 that after they heard a hard saying, they were offended and they left? And Jesus looked at his 12 and those around them. He said, Will you leave also? Peter had to look, the same Peter that wrote this. He said, Where are we going to go? He said, In you are the words of life. Eternal life. Who should we go to? Where are we going to go? See, but some people can't handle that hard meat. That's why the Bible says, as a newborn babe, desire the sensitive milk of the word so we can grow. Desire the word. Desire. And be obedient like Abraham did. Walk by faith. Abraham was obedient. He did what God said. I said, well, we're going to go back to Ephesians. Go, go back to Ephesians very quickly because I want to I finish this out. Verse 14, chapter 4, verse, verse 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. See, there are a lot of saints of God being carried about with this doctrine, with that doctrine, with this doctrine, being deceived. By people that's, that's that's making it sound good. Even the devil made it sound good to you, Adam and Eve, and turned them away from God, from God's ordinance, from God's law, from God's word. By the slight of men and the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse fifteen. But speak the truth in love. May grow up. May do what? Grow up, up into him in all things, which is the head, 